last week on Handy Creators. It's percolating. For these, you're going to use the 3 8 anchors listed below. Finish. Another day, more supplies because that is how we get by. <laughs> 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 Welcome to part three, which is the kitchen. Kitchen time. <laughs> We kind of wanted to give you guys a little overview of what it is that we have planned. Jesus is a huge believer in drawing, okay? So you want to show him, babe, what you have? What you want to do is draw some sort of model of what it is that you want. And we knew that we wanted to have the barbecue area here, a few access doors, a little burner, and then the sink. And then we, I went ahead and drew all the dimensions of what it is that we need based on what we wanted. And then also the top view of what it will look like so that when we're building it, it's quick and easy. Grab some spray paint and maybe paint on the floor, more or less what you want. That way you have an idea of what it'll look like when it's all said and done. The first thing we did was endless hours on Pinterest. I love Pinterest when it comes time to build something or any crafty idea because there's so many things out there that you would never imagine. When you have all these things together, you kind of just make it your own. I'm sorry, I'm like, this is just the sun's in my face. It's like, it's not sunny, but like it's there. Jesus is the one who actually makes that idea come to life. He enjoys and he's always been the one who kind of draws it out and gives us a more of a visual of exactly what it is that we want to do. The spray painting was actually a very, very good key to this because sometimes you might have a picture of how big it is or what it'll look like. But when you actually paint the floor, you can see like, oh, wow, like we thought this was going to be too much uh, space for the area that we wanted and then when we actually spray painted we're like oh my god no this is perfect so definitely do that and then like i said once you have those plans drawn up it'll <laughs> it'll make it easier when it's time to build before getting started we have to make sure that we had the supplies necessary to complete this project hey, it dropped so much <laughs> poor baby <laughs> you okay you okay <laughs> So, we bought too many bricks. Bought a lot of bricks. Why? We have too much. I know, we, we bought have 50 more coming. And we have a delivery tomorrow, 50 more. We purchased different style bricks just so the design's easier. Let me show you guys what we have. So, we have these solid one pieces with three holes that go all the way through, correct? Yes, they're four by eight by 16. And we have this one, which is like the standard block but half so i think like this will be one block so we have 50 50. the reason we did this was because when we did our backyard seating area we had to cut a lot of bricks and that was exhausting and very time consuming we decided to go this route now yeah we do have a little bit <laughs> a little bit too much but i think it'll work out what do you think we'll see for the first layer, you're going to want to go ahead and lay the bricks more or less how they're going to be placed. This will give you time to make any necessary cuts before mixing the concrete to level out the first floor. Always remember, safety first. When putting this first layer, we noticed that we might have a little bit of difficulty with our shutter, so we went ahead and had to adjust accordingly. Okay, so we want to show you guys what was that little back and forth. When we started putting in the blocks, the sink we got, which this was gifted to us, by the way. It fits perfect, but it fits up to right here. So we started placing the blocks and I told Jesus, I'm like, uh, our shutters aren't going to fit <laughs> if we do that. We could have maybe cut off a little piece here but it was still not going to be enough for the whole sink to fit what we decided to do was we moved it in a little bit just to give this enough space to breathe and what we're going to be doing is eliminate this whole side of the sink which in our plans we were actually looking into putting a countertop on top of that side because 
we wanted more countertop space. There go my measurements. <laughs> oh my god, that's true though. Everything you uh, did. Everything's is... messed up. That's the fun of it. You get to you get to play with it. <laughs> yeah, and hello. <laughs> Mm -hmm. One thing's in paper, one thing's in person. Right, Jesus? Let's get to cutting. Let's cut. <laughs> it. Once you've measured the first layer, it's time to mix the concrete. Remember that you want to get that perfect consistency so that it's easy to work with. Just make sure to follow the instructions on your concrete mix pack. Make sure to take your time with these bricks. The key to this is making sure that it is nice and leveled. If this first layer of concrete is nice and leveled, the rest will be fairly easy to place since you will not need to check for leveling once again. Always make sure to check for square when you're connecting to bricks. If for any reason it's not leveled, you can just take it out, put a little bit more concrete mix, and just place the brick again. Repeat the process until you have the first level of bricks all leveled out and perfectly even. And just like that, the first level is complete. So for those asking why we did this, most houses when they build a concrete slab, they're built with a sort of, um, what's the word, a... A slope it's built with a slope so that, that way when it rains the water can just drift off but since this is, is going to be a structure we want to make this as straight as possible so that's why we used cement for the first base but for the rest we're going to be using this puppy so this is a method is similar to like a no mortar method all we have to do is put this on the edge where the other bricks are going to lay and this pretty much acts as concrete and we're going to use the same method where you're going to interlock um interlock blocks so let's go ahead and do that and let me show you how it's done just add a strip of construction adhesive along the edges where the brick is going to set upon with the first one set it's time to repeat the process make sure that you're leaving the adequate space for any access doors that you're going to install later Unfortunately, we didn't buy as many bricks as we thought. We went to buy to purchase more bricks. We should be finishing our kitchen today. And we have a very special guest that just arrived. <laughs> My to get a my YouTube channel. <laughs> We're gonna be finishing the, uh, the kitchen today. So let's show you. To cut these bricks, we used an angle grinder with a masonry blade attached. They sell this at any local hardware store. With all the levels installed, it was time to make the necessary cuts to make the barbecue fit. We're gonna cut the sink now and we're gonna place it to see how it fits. Are you nervous to cut the sink? Too nervous. Oh my gosh, yeah. We're super nervous. Let's go. What's up, you guys? All right, we're back on day, I don't know, who cares? We're still working. We have pretty much finished the build of the kitchen. What we're gonna be working on today is right here in this area, there's going to be a door, but we need to find a way to make two bricks or two concrete blocks float here because on top of this is gonna be the barbecue. It's no easy task, but I think we have it figured out. So what we plan on doing is building a frame of wood that's gonna rest right here so that, that way we can lay the blocks on top of that let's see how easy this is let's go we used a couple of two by fours that we had extra from a previous project 
and we use this miter saw from Amazon to go ahead and make the cuts. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to build it, so go ahead and take a break while I get this done. For this frame, we applied construction adhesive where it was going to stand and then used a couple of bricks to go ahead and hold it into place. For the top 2x4, we just placed a little bit of construction adhesive as well and then screwed it in with some deck nails. All right, and just like that, the first space is done. So all these bricks right now, all they're doing is providing extra support so that the liquid nail can dry up and strengthen. And unfortunately, I didn't follow the measure twice cut once because as you can see, I had to add a little bit of attachment, a little attachment right here in order to get the desired height. But overall, I think it came out pretty good. So when the door comes, it's gonna catch onto this lip right here and then that way this will provide the support for the bricks that are going to go on here most likely we're going to use the half bricks so with that one done while that dries let's get started on the second one we repeated the same process for the other access door all right so it turns out we have a problem so we finished the frame and it's perfect because it holds this just how we want it but the gas tank don't fit it doesn't fit at all so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put two anchor screws right here or at least we're gonna try on each side and i'm probably gonna cut it by here just to allow enough space for the the propane tank to enter let's see if this works if something like this happens to you make sure to use a masonry drill bit to make your life a lot easier I tried to cut this with a handsaw, but I honestly have no idea what I was thinking. Thankfully, my father-in-law had a reciprocating saw that he could lend me. It worked. <laughs> so, we were able to put those concrete screws and thanks to the reciprocating saw that my father-in-law had, I was able to cut those off and still have it provide the support necessary to go ahead and lay that wood on that concrete on top so we're gonna be cutting this other bad boy to height and then we're gonna start removing all the excess liquid nail like this so that when we render everything is nice and smooth so enjoy this time lapse of us struggling to take off this adhesive with all the excess removed it was time to make the final cuts for the floating concrete bricks. To provide extra support for the access doors, we made a little bit of more concrete mix and added another brick so that it will sit nice and flush with the one already in place. We showed you in the previous clip how we did the other two access doors and now we're going to be doing one more this is going to be for the wood but this one's going to be a little bit different because this is not going to be a door this is going to be an open area where we plan on putting all the firewood for the campfire so what we do while i do that adriana is going to start rendering on the back wall so that that way after we can meet up let's do that and then keep this puppy going and this is our least favorite part honestly we're not pros at rendering and will never claim to be. We'll make sure to link some videos below that we followed that were very helpful in this process. We were trying to go for a very smooth finish, but unfortunately could not do so. But thanks to the previous sofa project that we did, we had some experience using this kind of material. You wanna make sure to have a magnesium float and a spatula to go ahead and apply this on the wall. You're always going to have to moist it before applying the stucco. If not, it won't adhere properly. Damn! Look at that edge though! And we're done. How do you feel? Tired. I'm so tired. So I think we should leave it, what, like 15, 20 minutes? 
Yeah, so we've been struggling because we keep trying to smooth it out at the back, which was the first place where we started, and it keeps dr like falling off. I personally hate stucco, <laughs> but I mean, I guess if it's the look you're going for, it has to be done. So let's see, let's show you guys how it looks. So every time we try to do this, he kind of just rips the wall off, so. Try you then. We would like to go with a smooth finish, but it's taking us a little bit to get there. We tried as many techniques as we could find to try to get this nice and smooth, but none of them would. As you can see, every time we would try, a piece of stucco would fall off and we would have to start all over. Turns out that for this kind of material, the best thing that you can use is a wooden float. Thankfully, my father-in-law had one that he built at home, but we'll make sure to link one below that you can purchase if you're doing this type of project. Guys, we finished. Yeah. We're he's yeah. no, no, he's not in labor. He's just carrying some bags. <laughs> Sorry, the lighting's really bad out here. So we finished. I cannot say it enough how much I hate stucco <laughs> and how much he's laughing because when we decided to do this project, I told him, I was like, no, let's not do stucco. Remember how the sofa was? That was so much trouble. Oh no, baby, baby, but this is a different material. It's going to be so much easier. It wasn't. It really was easy to apply. It's just the getting it even and getting it. Oh, you'll see in a time lapse. It just keeps falling. It doesn't stay on the wall so this is the current state of the kitchen i love that you could actually see it coming together now since it is <laughs> you're tired honey <laughs> guys this is what we do every time we have a project and we're super dirty we just drop everything right there in the kitchen in the door and then when we go by the front we pick it up so that's our secret. Thank you, my love. I don't know. I I really like that textured look. Personally, I really like the aged rock, like stone look. But I mean, that's a personal personal preference. This one is way, 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 way smoother than that one, than the couch. We actually did want this to be extremely smooth, but you guys, we couldn't do it. <laughs> this... It is as good as it got. We want to keep this channel 100% honest. We we couldn't do it. But I'm still happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with the way it came out. So we're done for the day. And Jesus is moisting, put, like putting a mist on the stucco. Remember to keep this wet. We decided to do this today because it's going to be raining for the rest of the week. And since we both work full time, we're not able to come out every few hours and missed it. So we planned according to the week. That way, nature could do that work for us. So there's that. And thank you guys for joining us today. If you guys want to see it painted, everything installed, doors, countertop, keep watching. Bye. Bye. This is the time we've all been waiting for. You guys, that was hell. <laughs>